What I've got for you today is one of my favorite Google apps, because everybody always seems to think about Word and Slide and Sheets, and my absolute favorite one always seems to get left out, and that one you can find right over here. See, there's Docs and Sheets and Slides, what everybody thinks of, but my favorite one is right here, and that's Google Drawings, am I right? Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay, all right. So um, what I'm gonna show you is how you can use Google Drawings to make graphic organizers that your students can use and manipulate and write in, and then they can turn them back into you. So it's a real neat, interactive, kind of mobile way to, to work with your content. And um, what's cool today is that I get to do this presentation on this 70-inch interactive display. And so one of the cool things that I really like about it is that if you hold two fingers on the screen like this, you can annotate in all sorts of different colors. And then when you're done, by the way, watch this. Do you need to erase something? Is that not amazing? OK, so if you want to save this, you click this little cloud button right here, and it saves it directly to, wait for it, your Google Drive. It saves a screenshot of it. So if you do annotations and you got students that are absent or something, then you can always get that to them. So anyway, that's this awesome 70-inch display. So I just wanted to tell you about that real quick. Also, if you're going to tweet, at ViewSonic is their, uh, is their Twitter handle if you want to use that. OK, let's get into it. <laughs> OK, so Google Drawings. So I was showing you earlier. This is where you find Google Drawings in your Google Drive. What I love about Google Drawings is that it's kind of like a digital piece of paper or a digital poster board. And so there's a ton of stuff that you can, you can do with it. Whoops. Here, let's see if I can get it to, come on. I need to get my controls back. OK, we'll use this one as an example anyway. And so you've got this slide right here. And what's nice is that it's limited on the number of tools you can use. So if you don't want to overwhelm students with a whole bunch of options, you've just got lines, shapes, text, and images. So it makes it real simple. And what I love about it is that you can create these graphic organizers. I actually did a uh, blog post where I created 15 different graphic organizers that you can copy and use for yourself. So to be able to find that, all you have to do is go to ditchthattextbook.com slash graphic organizers. And if you go there, you come right to this screen. So I want to show you one real quick. I like the Freyer model one. By the way, this is like a little ninja Google trick if you don't know about this, OK? So if you're in Google, let's say we're right here. No. Back. Here we go. OK, if you're in Google, that's the link to get to a Google file, right? And you can copy that and share it with your students. Watch this, if you don't know about this. I know some of you know about this. If I come over here and I change that word from edit, you know what, let's use this instead, to copy. And now if I take that link and I give it to my students, and they go to that link, watch what happens. Would you like to make a copy of this? So it automatic, it's almost like a photocopier. It's like a digital copy machine. And so if they go there, it makes their own copy that they can write on, so they're not writing on yours. Because how frustrating is it if you make copies and somebody writes on your original, right? That like destroys your day sometimes. OK, so we just make a copy of it, and then all of a sudden, this is their own that they can use. So I'm going to do that. See, this link right here is a copy link. See the copy right there? So if I hit make a copy, if I give that link to my students, they're always getting their own copy that they can write on. And so now, I set this up. This is really easy. I set this up with text boxes and shapes. That's all this is. That's all that I use to design it. And so I thought about, what do I want this Freyer model to look like? So I thought, OK, I want these four sections right here, and then we got to have the little circle in the middle. And so I drew out four rectangles, put text boxes on top of them. And now, hello. That's much better, isn't it, Ramon? 
that bothering you? <laughs> there, there we go. Good. Okay. Whoa, can you guys hear me now? You can really hear me now. All right, so anyway, your students have this copy. And so now what they can do is they can come in here. Let's bring this up. And if there's a definition that, you, that they want to write, they write it all in right here. They write in their characteristics. They write in their examples and their non-examples. And then once they're done, you have Google Classroom. They just submit this file to you. So they got this as a template. You just design it as a template. They write all of their stuff into it, and then they can turn it into you. So that's one of my favorite uses of, of this particular tool. Now, there's a ton of other things you can do with it. You can make interactive posters with Google Drawings, too. So think about this as a poster. You use a text box as a title. Because for me, if I was drawing it out with markers, my handwriting is so atrocious, it's good for me to have the fonts instead. I can put some pictures out here. And that makes it kind of like a regular poster, right? Except, why do we do things digitally if we can do the exact same thing with paper, right? We want to come up with something bigger and better. So if you're making this poster, what if you make links out to other pages, out to videos? Then it becomes almost like this interactive multimedia poster instead of a regular poster. So those are just some of the things that you can do with drawings. And if I went too fast on any of that, feel free to hang around and ask me questions afterwards. I'm going to be here. So, um, so anyway, that gives you an idea. And if you go to this page, which is ditchthattextbook.com slash graphic organizers, I have all 15 of these that you can copy into your Google Drive and use if you want to. So. All right, so if there's nothing else, and again, feel free to hang around if you've got questions. There's this one last thing I wanted to show you. I have this cool free ebook on my website. It's called 101 Practical Ways to Ditch That Textbook. I'm always looking for ideas of how to bring technology, creativity, innovation into the classroom. So this is just a huge brainstorm of a whole bunch of those ideas in ebook form. And so if you go here, there's actually a couple of ebooks and some notes from keynote speeches that I do, a whole bunch of good stuff. So if you want to get Matt's stuff, <laughs> you go to getmattstuff.com, and that's got a link to that free ebook and another free ebook and just a whole bunch of good stuff. So um, make sure you check that out if you want to. So anyway, if you didn't get a copy of the book and you're here for the whole presentation, which all of you were, uh, make sure you see me, and I'm happy to sign them afterwards if you want to. So, okay. <sighs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming.